two years ago. We were told that no world government we existed. We now take you live to the Central Texas Command Center and the heart of the resistance. It was just a few years ago they promised us no one was coming after our guns. Just a few years ago they promised us that nobody wanted to get rid of cash. It was just a few years ago they promised us the TSA would never be on the streets. It was just a few years ago they promised us they'd never have forced inoculations. And it was insane if you thought it. Just a few years ago they said fluoride was good for you. Now they admit it's brain damaging you. Just a few years ago they denied everything. Now they come out and admit it, but say it's good and that you're hateful and bad and racist if you don't agree with foreign insurance companies riding Obamacare to double and triple prices, lower the quality of care, and screw you over. So in the first year of global Obamacare, just here in the U.S., global profits for insurance companies on our backs went up 47%. I know major hospital chain owners and others, and they just go, Alex, you're absolutely right. It's all written by insurance companies and big chains to shut down all the little mom and pops and rape everyone. And they tell me, Alex, I've never made more money. It's unbelievable. And it's all done through social engineering and class warfare where the poor socialists actually think they're getting something free. And under Obamacare, they get rid of real charity care that's on record in law. That's just an example. And they get up there and go, there are no death panels. Yeah, there are. Now they admit it. One week after it passes, they have to cover a Newsweek, the case for killing granny. Bill Gates goes, yeah, there are death panels. <laughs> Sucker, we got it. And you can't keep your doctor, and we're going to increase your prices, and we're going to lower the quality of it. And you know what? There is a penalty. Started kicking in for businesses above 50 people last year. Now it kicks in to businesses, period. And then, oh, next year to everybody. Upwards of $5,000 a person that you don't insure. Of course, they just cut your pay or lay you off or make you go to part-time. They admit that part-time jobs in America, just search this, doubled in the last three years with Obamacare getting phased in like slow death. They just drip the poison in where you kind of feel sleepy and lay down. They don't want to kill you right away. <laughs> They're going to do it real slow so nobody notices. So everything's done soft kill. Oh, we're just going to start taking guns selectively now outside of law. Just recommendations, executive order. And then, of course, as they take your free speech, as they take your guns, oh, we have to federalize your pension funds to keep them safe. Oh, big banks have to take money out of your account now and just give it to themselves like they're doing in Europe. It's all being announced. Oh, it's totally normal. Now we'll charge you to have money in the bank. It's totally normal. It's totally normal. Your children belong to the state. I'm a woman with short hair. I'm Rachel Maddow. I'm the authority. Obama, Congress, time for you to get in line. <laughs> None of this is creepy at all. Government openly funding ISIS, openly giving them stinger missiles. Neocon Republicans running Obama. You tell a Democrat that, they're on too big a power trip, they look at you through feeble little eyes and giggle and go, you're just mad, you're not in power. I had a prominent Democrat this morning who I was on the phone with on some issues here in town, and he was giggling and laughing at me about the executive order and betting I was upset. And I said, you know full well this is to screw everybody over. It is a horrible thing. And, and he was like, oh, I know, I'm just having fun. Oh, God, it's sick. <laughs> Hung up at the end of our conversation. I mean, they all know. It's just a big sick joke. So we're all just supposed to just, ha, 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 while everything gets screwed over, and we go from a innovation economy to a conquest economy. <sighs> I'm going to go to Max Kaiser for the balance of the hour. MaxKaiser.com, syndicated TV host, RT, BBC, Al Jazeera, you name it, filmmaker. And he did predict what's now happening in bond markets and stock markets a few years ago. He said it would happen by last year and it ended up starting a little bit late, but uh, fortune favors the bold. He, he's right about 90% of the time and uh, just happens a little bit later than he said. And so now Soros, it's time for 2008 all over again. They only announce right at the end for everybody. So people go, Oh, Soros is so smart. Oh my gosh, what a wonderful Nazi collaborator. Uh, China's 29 minutes of chaos stunned brokers 
and a race to sell, trillions disappearing, our stock market dropping, you know, close to 1,000 points now being pumped back up. AFP fears for world economy wreak carnage on oil stocks. Oh, I'm the fearmonger when I shoot videos and articles about how the collapse has to come because all the experts basically say it's coming. I mean, we've got more derivatives than we had in 2000. People go, you fearmonger. It'd be like saying if some 89-year-old man who's had 14 heart attacks takes up smoking cigarettes again and starts marching up a mountain, you say, hey, I think you might not, you might have a heart attack pretty soon. What fear-mongering? It's like saying Dick Cheney might have some heart problems. I think Dick Cheney might have a heart problem in, in, in the future. That's incredible fear-mongering. Next, he's going to say Fisher in the ocean. That crazy Alex, he said Obama would come for our guns, and now he is. What a kook. That kook Ted Cruz said Obamacare shut down the economy. Oh, it is now, but Newsweek's calling him Hitler. Say what you want about Ted Cruz, eloquent, smart, informed. Hitler, he's not. Obama is becoming like Hitler, and I'm pointing out the Republican neocons run him. All right, I'm ranting. Max Kaiser, we live in this world where other economies are in deep recession or depression or war. The West is financing chaos, admittedly, to come in with multinationals and take over. They're lining Europe up for collapse. In many areas, they got 45% unemployment in Spain for, for men. And then they're telling us, everything's fine, Max Kaiser. You're a fear monger. Alex Jones is a fear monger. You know what, Max? I wish I was a fear monger. I, yeah. I mean, I wish, I wish I was wrong. I wish you were wrong. The real state of the economy is hellish, isn't it? Hey, Alex, how's it going? What's happening down there in Austin, Texas? Uh, where, where are you joining us from, Max Kaiser? I am in the uh, city of London in the United Kingdom where Donald Trump, of course, is in big trouble because he has uh, angered people uh, with his uh, comments about uh, immigration and they might ban him from entering the United Kingdom. So, you know, we don't want Donald Trump in the United Kingdom, Alex. He, he's saying things that just, just are going to make the people here cower in, in, in fear. And what a free country where they're arresting preachers that criticize radical Islam and putting them on trial and banning street demonstrations against uh, uh, sexually mutilating women. And, and, and now they want to ban, they ban Michael Savage and Donald Trump. Boy, that sounds like a really free country to me. Well, the speech laws in the United Kingdom are some of the most oppressive in the world. I know that the, uh, they're constantly... Uh, attempting to censor my show that we do here in London. Oh, really? Tell us about that. I forgot you uh, have a big professional production there. Used to be. Yeah. Uh, tell well, us we what we've experienced. Well, yeah, we did a we did a report about George Osborne, who is the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, and uh, that's he the Federal introduced... Reserve over there, folks. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, the that's Treasury. The Treasury. Treasury. Yeah. Exactly. So he did a, uh, a a scheme where the government is subsidizing housing because. The entire economy here is based on a property bubble. There's no manufacturing to speak of. There's no diversity in the economy. It's almost entirely based on this housing bubble, property bubble that's almost exclusively in London. So he came out with another government subsidy like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to pump up this bubble. And we said on my show that this is a Ponzi scheme. So his office sent a letter trying to shut us down because we referred to his program as a Ponzi scheme. The next day, in fact, the Bank of England issued a report saying that George Osborne's scheme is uh, it comes closest to replicating a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> so, so then they, they, they went away. Well, I mean, they, these they, governments legalizing f beyond fractional reserve banking with derivatives and credit default swaps, I mean, that is beyond a Ponzi scheme. So, I mean, the, you're saying well, this guy's in, in, Yeah, in the UK, you have uh, the ability to sell the same bond an infinite number of times. In, in, in the United States, you're limited. You can't sell the same bond an infinite number of times. You can sell it a few times and claim that it has a collateral value. But in the UK, and this is why all of the major banks and all the major countries, treasuries, outsource their fraud to the UK. This is why the UK is responsible for the Lehman collapse, the AIG collapse, the Bernie Madoff collapse, the London Whale from J.P. Morgan collapse, because everyone outsources their fraud to the U.K. because the U.K. is where you can commit egregious, fraudulent financial behavior like what this particular 
fraud is called infinite rehypothecation. And then don't and they people. don't they compete with Frankfurt and others to, and and the Swiss as well uh, and, and to be the mm. most corrupt? Well, you know, this is a funny joke because they're having a referendum to decide whether the UK should pull out of the EU. And uh, if they do, the country will completely collapse because Frankfurt will become the financial center of Europe. The euro is incredibly bigger than the uh, pound. And, uh, the, you know, the UK is sinking into really this kind of infinitesimally important. Whenever I leave the UK, if I go to the US or I go anywhere in the world, it's remarkable. You just never hear about the UK ever. It's, it's a completely insignificant country every way except when they bow down to the states and do the state's bidding. Other than that, there's almost no reason for the UK to exist. Well, I'll say this, Max Kaiser. I want to come back and ask you about the Muslim crisis, but get into what's happening in China and the markets. That's why you're really here. But I was in the UK uh, just a few months ago, and, I mean, I'm telling you, almost all the taxi drivers at the airport, both times I was there and then back from Europe, would not give uh, 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 people fares or would try to double, triple charge what they were supposed to, and they were very hateful towards Westerners. And, uh, I, I, and again, in my past experience, you know, Muslims and people were not rude and hateful like this, and we have all the mass raping and things going on. I wanted to ask you uh, what the climate is and why all this is going on and, and just the piratical actions uh, that I witnessed there. But, but, but first, what's happening with the economy with Max Kaiser straight ahead, China in big trouble. Are you sneezing, coughing? And I started going back up, but now the new headline, Associated Press, USA Today. Stocks plunge as Dow down 300, NASDAQ in correction. So this is the type of stuff that's happening right now, January 7th, 2016. Now, remember a few months ago they had that glitch? No, that was computers programmed to then stop trading, to stop a plunge. Well, now they've stopped trading on certain things and admitting it's not a glitch. So I love how they called everybody conspiracy theorists, including myself, when we said that that was an automatic default system, and now they just admit it. It's just, it's wild how discredited they are. I mean, MSNBC has on average 126,000 viewers an hour over 24 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, I can do a YouTube video in my backyard, and it gets half a million views on average. Facebook mentions we have, in the last week, Six and a half million views out of like 10 videos. One of them has 1.8 million. I, I'm not bragging about us. Look at mainstream media. They're already dead. Max Kaiser, what do you make of this financially, obviously, and the fact that they keep just denying financial facts to people? I mean, you've come out and, and said LIBOR before it came out, fixing interest rates, fixing currency rates. You know, then the Rolling Stone does they act like, oh, my gosh, they're God. They need a Pulitzer Prize. You know, they did it 10 years late. Uh, I mean, isn't it too little too late? But but now they just admit they're fixing the stock market, Max Kaiser? Oh, these are Wall Street jihadis. You know, these are financial terrorists. They use weapons of mass financial destruction to blow up the economy. And it's and it's and it's and it's being destroyed. And look, this guy, uh, Fisher, I sent you the article on this. Uh, Richard Fisher, former Federal Reserve member, he came out on CNBC this week and said the whole thing was a scam. In 2009, we front run or we front loaded the market with trillions of dollars of funny money to create a so-called wealth effect. And he well, went on effect. he went on national TV, the squawk on the street, mm -hmm. and, and admitted it. We have the video in front of us. Go ahead. Right. He just said and the wealth effect is is the idea that if you make the wealthiest even wealthier, that the economy will benefit. Well, that didn't happen. The, the underclass, the permanent American underclass got bigger. The number of people that are participating in the employment uh, dropped to record lows. Oh. And the wealth and income gap skyrocketed. So his theory that, well, if you give the, the, the top 2,000 bankers in America committed massive fraud, and they crashed the market in 2008. So we gave them, it's now been all added up, we gave them $15 trillion to make them whole so that they didn't have to suffer any losses. As a matter of fact, they tripled and quadrupled their wealth. And now here we are in 2015, 2016, and I'm on TV, and I'd like to tell you that it didn't work. The economy did not 
pick up. There's no meaningful uh, tax revenues to pay off this debt that we've accumulated. And he expects markets to crash because everything he did has been a complete failure. Paul Krugman at the New York Times, who's been a cheerleader for this for seven or eight years, he's a complete and utter charlatan who is a financial jihadist, as I, I would, he's part of like the jihad Paul, who, who believes that by the way to create an economic growth is by printing trillions and trillions of dollars worth of, of, of paper that any two-year-old can tell you would reduce the purchasing power of that paper. If but it's get, even worse, as paper. you point out. They give it to the ultra-rich elites who then make sure it doesn't even trickle down to the public, no, which, they, which would be bad enough because it would cause inflation. They just don't care. They, they just know no. what they're doing, impoverishing us on purpose, laughing at us, and then having... Well, there's two numbers to look at. You have the money supply number, which went up with the trillions and trillions of dollars, but then you have what's called the money velocity number, which tracks... Is the money circulating? And that's hit new all-time lows. So clearly, as you point out, when you give these guys a few trillion dollars, they go out and they buy a Medigliani, who was recently sold at an auction house in New York for $170 million. This is a few scraps of paint on a canvas written by, you know, someone did in Paris, Medigliani, uh, you know, a, a number of years ago. And then they finance fake leftist propaganda about raising taxes on rich people that's really to raise taxes on middle class to further destroy them. Well, when taxes, it's a joke. I mean, Apple Computer has hundreds of billions of dollars sitting offshore. Tax exempt. They don't bring it on uh, onshore because they don't want to pay tax. So how how is that not part of being a financial jihadist? How is Tim Cook not a financial terrorist? He's doing the same damage as ISIS is doing. It's just he's doing it with weapons of mass financial. I want to ask you in the next long segment coming up, Max Kaiser, what the next shoe to drop is, what's happening in China, uh, your take on other world events and more. MaxKaiser.com is his website, and he's been predicting what's happening. Now, Soros says this is the new 2008. Is that true, or could it be worse or better? We'll find out straight ahead, Infowars.com. Then we have one of our great crew members, reporters, anchors, hosts. It's me, Rob Dew today, Anthony Gucciardi tomorrow. We're going to go back to Max Kaiser here in just a moment. We're facing something here that is very serious, and, and I'm facing it. I'm not up here lecturing people. I'm, I'm really giving myself a um, retrospective, not so much pep talk, but just really need to gauge what's happening and not become comfortable with all the dictatorial power grabs, not become comfortable with all the gun grabbing, not to become comfortable with all the medical tyranny, not to become comfortable with Obamacare and really realize it's only going to get worse. We've got to push back or it's going to get worse. It's not going to have homeostasis and just sit at one point. That's not how the universe works. And that's why they're driving their agendas. No matter how illegal, how corrupt, how out of control. I mean, you bring in three, four million people out of war-torn areas, knowing a bunch of them invaded Syria to, to rape, and you wonder why they start raping in mass, and the media and the government get caught covering it up in France, in Sweden, in Germany, and it blows up in their face. I mean, the, the kleptocrats, the left that's allied with radical Islam and others, They've got such a hatred of the West that they really ought to think about what they're trying to destroy and what they're going to be involved in. You people are front and center for radical Islam to take out. But, you know, your parents were conservative or whatever, so you, they made you go to church, so you want to show them, and it's really dirty, it's really nasty, cuckolding to bring in folks to rape the women. It's so cool. I mean, it's, let me tell you, on the left... Radical Islam is avant-garde. They see women with hoods on their heads. I mean, they get excited. They think it's so cool. I mean, they just, oh, it's so sexy. Oh, and because they don't like the, you know, they're men. How dare you wear pants? I'd make the orders. Oh, my gosh, Shihadi, I love you. Oh, yes. I mean, it's sick. I've seen uh, articles where Swedish women get raped, and they go, I don't want to complain. He can't help it. He's been downtrodden. There are robberies all over the gentrified areas of East Austin on record, and the people because it's on their little private Facebooks in the neighborhoods. I've seen these. Pat Raleigh's coming about it. They go, yeah, we, he's home invaded four or five times and, you know, did rob some other people and attack him, but we just can't call the police. It'll ruin his life, the 17-year-old. Yeah, my grandmother's jewelry's all gone, but no, you know. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, these are cult members, folks. Obama could be like Tulsa Doom and Conan the Barbarian, and they could be standing on a 500-foot platform, and he could go, come to me, come to me, my child, fly to me. And they would just go, liberal, uh. And, and they could do the exact same thing and, and say, she flew, she is in heaven now, come to me, my child, come to me. I will, yay, they just jump off. I mean, it, but can we find that online? I guarantee you, Tulsa Doom, woman falls to death. I bet we can find that and play it. I mean, that's how cult-like these people are. It's the women's fault they were dressed sexy, says the feminist mayor. Uh, uh, I mean, just crazy. MaxKaiser.com. When I asked him about Bitcoin, and then he wants to bring that up. Uh, I mean, I think things like this are the answer to the Federal Reserve monopoly. I, I just don't know if Bitcoin's it. I just don't want to promote it and have it go south someday, but it's going to go up, it's going to go down. It's a way for the general public, I guess, to get in on speculation, the globalists don't control, but I just don't like the secret providence of Bitcoin. I wonder if Max Kaiser really knows, but we're about to go back to him. What I wanted to say here is, it's way up right now in its history. If you don't support Infowars.com and Infowarsstore.com, you're crazy. If you don't invest in a hardcore organization, that's really breaking through to the other side, breaking through political barriers, waking people up worldwide, putting out an alternative narrative to the fraudulent globalist story, parable, fable, Aesop's delusion, then you're crazy. We really need your support. 15% uh, off running until Friday night on everything at InfoWarsStore.com. Whether it's Hillary for prison shirts, they're limited edition. When these supplies sell out, that's it. Uh, whether it's Survival Shield X2, DNA Force, uh, brain force. I mean, just try it. I mean, people, again, that go and look at what this stuff's made up of and the quality of it just get blown away, especially the pricing. The average nutraceuticals are marked up seven times, folks. We just mark them up 100%, 150 and that sounds outrageous to me, but we have such big bills that that's the bare minimum to tap really high quality, lowest price, and pay the bills around here. It's financing so much. PrisonPlanet.tv members, this ends next week. Six months free when you sign up for a year. Pay for six months, get uh, six months free. 20 people can use it. That's 20 memberships, half off. One membership is 20. I mean, you just can't beat a deal like that. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or 888-253-3139. And I want to thank you all for your support, your prayers, and most importantly, Sending our links, sending our videos out. Uh, that's the real power of InfoWars. All right, Max, I got a bunch of questions I want to get to with you. What's next in the economy? What's going on with China? Why is this happening now? Is Soros right? I mean, obviously, he says there's crashes all the time to manipulate stuff and has brought down more countries than, you know, the, the Germans could in World War II, which he also fought on their side, of course. We can't forget that. What a wonderful person. Um, where is all this going? Is Soros right? <laughs> well, yeah, I do want to talk about Bitcoin at some point, but to get to your question about Soros, he did come out this week and say that this looks like 2008 all over again. And um, I guess what's different now is that we have the Saudi, the Saudi, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia is now on the verge of collapse. And the U.S. has really picked a fight with uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, first, they tried to undermine the U.S. fracking industry by crashing the price of oil themselves because they are the, the swing producer in the OPEC cartel. Uh, but once the price of the oil started to crack, it unleashed geopolitical tensions everywhere and brought Russia in, China in. Iran is now taken an adversarial position against uh, Saudi Arabia. So this is really quite epic. And the U.S. is um, at a loss because it's very difficult for them to support Saudi Arabia when they're beheading people every day, dozens and dozens of people. But they have a longstanding antagonism toward Iran. Um, so that's, of course, problematic. Russia is on the side of Iran, uh, but Russia is supplying the U.S. with vital intelligence in f killing off the uh, jihadis and the extremists in Syria. So that's a bit of a problem. So I'd say, unlike 2008, this is the big difference this time, is that look at the price of oil. It's crashing down. This means that all the fracking rigs in America are not profitable. It's a complete waste of money. 
for one. It means that these big oil industry titans, the big uh, companies, are losing money hand over fist. And of course, because oil is the most traded commodity in the world, you see the stock markets are, I think, reflecting in large part the fact that oil is, is, is down and the Chinese economy is down. Chinese economy has obviously been the beneficiary of a multi-year money pumping bubble and artificial currency suppression through pegging their uh, currency to the dollar, which gave them this an enormous export business for a number of years. But now that is unwinding and it's a huge, um, you know, if you remember, Alex, the Rube Goldberg machines we used to build as kids, you know, where you, you build these extravagant little machines where you, to get the marble across the road, uh, you know, it, it goes through 20 different bells and whistles and trap doors. Everything is connected in a very uh, esoteric way. Byzantine. Once it's, yeah, a Byzantine way. Once it starts to collapse, it, it all falls down. So we have the the effect of a big bubble being blown that we've all benefited from for 20 years, but now that's it's become it's coming unglued, and so it's on it's on the way down. And unfortunately, the the genesis of this has been criminality, and but there's no attempt to put the bankers in jail. Instead, they believe that their policies need to be tweaked, that they need to print more money. This is a huge fallacy, you know. If you want to call it the liberal fallacy is that they believe, and Paul Krugman at the New York Times being a good example, that these problems can be solved by printing more money. They refuse to accept the fact that the problems are the result of printing money and not having a sound economy with sound sure. money. And so that's Well, Max, opinion. let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. You're obviously a shrewd guy. We're a top stock broker, invented the Hollywood Stock Exchange. It's one of the models of the virtual trading systems. And, and you know, you're a big fish. You know, you're a lot of famous people, you know, the Soroses, the Baldwins, all of them. So you're an insider to a certain extent. Um, but I think, because I've had dinner with you, I've hung out with you quite a bit. I mean, I, I know you're sharp. But obviously, and I'm, and I'm not being condescending, I mean, you know they're not failing. You know Krugman's not failing. This has all been beautifully planned. They admit it's been beautifully planned to implode the whole world, give themselves the aid to save the world over and over again every decade and to consolidate power, create a global cashless society where they're tax exempt and control everyone through electronic gulags, the term you coined, uh, the casino gulag, and to basically take over the whole planet's resources with carbon taxes selectively enforced to shut down all competition. Uh, so let, it is let a me, hellish let me plan. That. They are devastating tacticians. They are the greatest evil the earth has ever faced. They are Hitler, Stalin, Mao. Uh, uh, rolled into one, we are in devastatingly bad shape. They are vicious, and only admitting just how hardcore and premeditated they are will we defeat them. It's easy to say Paul Krugman's full of bull, or everybody else is full of bull, uh, lying to they're, they're not. They're not dumb. They're lying to their enemy. I mean, you know, uh, that's what's happening. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, let me address that, I, that, that, that point that you're making. So what you're, what you're suggesting is that these guys... It's not that they're just uh, dumb or, or stupid or they, there's a premeditation involved. There's, very, there's a calculated uh, analysis and they're ripping people off blind. And that is a byproduct of what I believe to be the case where these folks are inculcated or indoctrinated in what you could call market fundamentalism. In other words, take a Paul Krugman, for example. Yes, he is not a dumb guy, but it's not that he's so much doing this by premeditation, but he has been indoctrinated in the belief that what he is doing is in God's, uh, he, he's sure, God-like God's that. will. That's, that's the religion, I think, for the... But, but I believe that they believe that. I, I think that they, that's why I equate them to suicide bombers are equal to suicide bankers. They're cultists. Okay, they're cultists. Suicide bombers believe that they are um, doing, they're going to kill themselves and the people around them because they believe in their fanaticism. They believe, they misquote the Quran. Uh, and they, they uh, same thing with uh, market fundamentalists. They would read Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations and draw completely Sure, but let's expand on that. They say it's free market when they create fraudulent, counterfeit financial instruments and then scapegoat free market, as you pointed out, explain to people the difference between a real free market system versus this cooked rigged thing where the top six or seven big banks 
are, are exempt from taxes and can create fraud that we back up and pay for and too big to fail. That's the there's opposite of the free market. There's, there's, there's two major schools of, of, of economics the past 100 years. One is socialism. One is capitalism. In socialism, the state makes sure that everyone is provided for and you don't have entrepreneurs breaking out and becoming billionaires. Then there's capitalism where you have people breaking out and becoming billionaires, but there's a lot of people who are the losers. And, the, uh, and there's risks and there's rewards. Now, that system of economics in America served well for a long time. But what happened starting 40 years ago when the U.S. went off the gold standard and we brought in monetarism, monetarism which is a new this, this cultist religion of worshiping central banks, the, we brought in this idea that any time the economy slips or any time the market slips, that the monetar, monetarist overlords at the Fed are going to prevent that risk from appearing in anybody's uh, bank account. So they keep bailing out the banks. They keep bailing out the stock market. And that's the complete opposite of free market capitalism. It is much more similar to socialism. In fact, America is a socialist country. It's a communist country run by the Politburo called the Federal Reserve Bank and the 12 members of the Central Banking and the Federal Open Market Committee. The price discovery that goes into real free market capitalism has been abolished. The stock market is not priced based on earnings or value. It's based on circulating free money by crooks. The gold and silver market does not, the, the demand for gold has never been higher, but the price is down because it's not true price discovery because it's not. And free how market long capitalism. can the artificiality go on? It can go on until you have an event like 2008 where banks stop lending to each other because they don't believe the this fundamentalism anymore. You know, imagine two jihadis are in the desert and they, they decide that they're not going to kill each other and boom, the, the, the jihadism dies. Wahhabism is over because you can't find any more suckers to go blow themselves up. Well, when they run out of people that are willing to commit this massive market fundamentalist fraud, then there's, you run out of suckers, the, the emperor has no clothes, and you start to see it unwind. And we're starting to see that now because these tend to happen in cycles around you know, six or seven year cycles. If you go back to the crash of 87, then the bond market crash of 94, then the dot-com crash of 2000, then the subprime crash of 2007. So here we are in 2016, and we're having a crash. It could be a, basically a China crash, let's call it, at, the, at, at this time. So this is right on schedule. You know, I said this crash was coming a couple of years ago, but the, I, it, I didn't anticipate that the European Central Bank which has had a history of being a prudent bank, would open up its balance sheet and take in 10 to $15 trillion. Sure, there's like an arms race. Debt. There's an arms race of debt right now. And right. obviously, if the elites get first use of the money, they're going to keep saying it's okay. But they're building armored redoubts for themselves everywhere now. Five years ago, they wouldn't admit that. Now they do. Five years ago, they wouldn't admit they rig all well, the what's, markets. What's the best performing currency of 2015, which happened and would like to make You're a You're going to tell us is Bitcoin. It is Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has been the best performing currency every year for the past, since, it's, since it came into existence. And I've except, never been an enemy of it, and I never got involved in it because they'll claim it's crooked or something and arrest me. So maybe I'm mad I never got involved in it, but I've been a yeah, supporter look, of the, the idea. Heart, the, the, the basis of Bitcoin is, I can sum it up in one word, encryption. You know, encryption is what, how George Washington So that's the value the is the privacy. Yes. And that's how George Washington won the Revolutionary War was through the secret messages and encryption. That, that you know that 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 was a big part of it. Encryption is huge. Encryption protects our privacy. Here in the UK, they want to pass what's called the Snoopers Charter, which means that the government wants to kill encryption. They don't want anything to be encrypted. Which will kill the happen. internet. It'll kill the internet. It'll kill a lot of things. Uh, but there is, in my opinion, those who support Bitcoin are fighting that fight. They're fighting the fight against governments. No, I totally agree with you. I just don't like speculation, but it is a people's speculation. It's well, forget the, forget the speculation. I'm not even saying you could never own a Bitcoin and still believe in the, in the value. No, I do. As, I do. I do. I encryption. just don't want to make a recommendation and then have right, well, not go well. But, but Max, 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 Bitcoin's got many years behind it now. Looks solid. Looks like it's emerged as the first true global independent currency of value. Uh, and I think the fact that it just keeps surging shows how discredited no the uh, no mainline. No state, no bank. No, no state, I, no I bank. You. I hear you. It's revolutionary.
Uh, I've just reserved judgment, uh, but it looks better and better, Max. Uh, salute Something you. just happened that has explained why survival food... Smiling. That's Hank Williams, Williams Jr. my Christian name and y'all can keep the chain. Made the song after he got fired off Monday Night Football for speaking ill of the leader. On the wall. That translates in German to the Fuhrer. You bluff when I call. He compared Obama to Hitler. Keep my big B8. Keep my friends the same. Keep the government out of my business and y'all can keep the chain. Right, scum. This country sure as hell been going down the drain. By design. They want us lined up like poor Russians in the Soviet Union for our sausages. United Socialist States of America. Run by a bunch of billionaire scum that are tax exempt. Final minutes with Max Kaiser in this segment and the next. Then Rob Dew takes over from the Situation Room studio. He'll be discussing the call to impeach Obama, the rash of rapes in Europe. David Knight will join Rob in studio to talk about um, backstabber Paul Ryan, who's fighting to keep Obama in office. L let me ask you a question, Max Kaiser. You know, we will get back into Bitcoin in the next segment. We can do five more minutes the next hour. I mean, I, I was for impeachment of Bush. I really am nonpartisan, but they call me right wing as I'm pro-gun and like lower taxes. I mean, what idiot wouldn't when the major billionaire groups are basically tax exempt and lobbying to screw me out of my little bit of money and my staff out a little bit of money they keep? I mean, it's just ridiculous if people are informed. But man, Obama's got to be impeached on the open borders and flying refugees in and not even having IDs and just turning them loose and coming after the guns outside of law, saying Congress has got to get in line, so I can't wait for them to act. I mean, uh, it, it, persecuting the media, the IRS persecutions. I mean, I've never thought such precedents would be nakedly set. And then I fear if they get some neocon like Jeb Bush in, I, I mean, it'll just get worse. I mean, this is sick. What do you think's going on on that front? And my big push to... Well. Yeah, well, let me ask you a question. Well, I mean, that's the question. I mean, what do we do about Obama? I mean, we just well, let him continue to do this? Uh, obviously, the, the, the past week was highlighted by the big gun speech. So that, that's definitely in the news. So let me, let me ask you a question. I'm, I know you follow the gun issue, obviously. It's a big issue. And I am always looking at this issue myself. And, and so I want to ask you a question. So um, what... What, what would happen? And I haven't really thought through this. I'm, I'm really genuinely curious what you would think of this idea. You know, what would be the situation if gun owners were re required to buy insurance to go with that gun? So when you buy a gun, you need to buy insurance to go with that gun. Similar to the way when you uh, learn to get a car. going down the road of, of guns. So we'll get into the Bitcoin stuff and his uh, announcement, Bitcoin Capital 3, Bitcoin fund managed by Simon Dixon and Max Kaiser that pays daily dividends in Bitcoin. So uh, we'll talk some about other revolutionary things that are happening in the last five minutes we have left here. But Max, I understand. I mean, I think you grew up in a big city in New York, all that. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, Connecticut, whatever it was, I forget. It's almost like pod people, like you grew up on Mars versus people that grew up I get it, you know, that have Texas accents. We actually have vestigial tails or whatever. 
Uh, but we're a violent country forged out of war and conquest. We have guns to protect ourselves as part of the culture. 12,000 people die in a year. Only a few thousand are innocents. I mean, I mean, prescription drugs kill hundreds of thousands. Flesh-eating bacteria, hundreds of thousands. And it's not this hysterical issue. They take each death and turn it into a tragedy, waving a bloody shirt to try to get our guns. So that's where I stand. Yeah. Okay, but it might, uh, I'm just saying over the past couple of days, there's been, you know, it's been in the news quite a bit. And I have not heard anyone mention this, the question of insurance. So I'm asking you about it just because I'm curious. I, I don't really, I'm not advocating it. I'm just saying... I'm curious. I'm Please don't give them folks. horrible ideas. They've actually funded that. It's, 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 you know, it, okay. You know. No, no. Please well, don't give them a devastating plan to destroy us. But, but don't, I mean, please, okay. please. Right. You're like talking about to kryptonite here. Beans. <laughs> kryptonite, put it away, forget it. We didn't see that. Good guy. Uh, <laughs> you're something else. Hey, sweetheart, tell me about Bitcoin, and you're one of the great captains of it now. Been a great captain since day one. You're probably the inventor of it. And I'm joking. And then, uh, I mean, wh where's it all going? T t tell me about what you're doing. Oh, well, Bitcoin Capital, as you point out, I mean, it's a great way for people to uh, get involved in Bitcoin. So it pays a daily Bitcoin dividend. I think, actually, if you live in the United States, it might be difficult to participate because the U.S. government is taking a pretty adversarial position against Bitcoin because it, they see it as competition. But uh, they should be aware of this product, this fund, and uh, they should look into it. And uh, so I, I mentioned it here. We, we raised almost $3 million for this. And um, we use part of the money to invest in new Bitcoin startup companies that are doing, you know, entrepreneurs who are creating companies. Who's the bald-headed uh, guy wearing a uh, Santa Claus suit on your website? <laughs> That's Simon Dixon. And uh, he is, um, he co-founded the fund with me. And he is, he and I went to the very first Bitcoin conference in 2000, one of the very first conferences in 2011. Sure. Bitcoin, the price was $3 a share. Uh, he has a, an equity crowdfunding site called Bank to the Future that uh, is a great success. And so we are, uh, we exchanged notes. We said, you know what, why don't we just create a fund like this? We can use the mining output to pay people daily dividends. The people who are in Bitcoin Capital One, for example, they've already gotten half of what they invested back in dividends. So Sure, and I wasn't bashing him. Uh, I mean, I actually know who he is. I kind of like that, 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 that sports jacket. But I guess he is kind of like Santa Claus handing out the goodies. What about the charge that Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme? I'm not saying that, but explain to me. I mean, because the government's well, got Ponzi, something a, even worse. A Ponzi, so. scheme, well, a, big, a Ponzi scheme, by definition, is like Social Security or Bernie Madoff. Yes. Where they, it's ever-expanding. Paying out with, more than it's coming in. Yeah. Where Bitcoin is, by definition, an anti-Ponzi scheme. There's a set number of coins. That's, there are no more ever to be created. It's, it's capped at $21 million. So it's the, it's the absolute opposite of a Ponzi scheme. So that's not even a valid, that's a non-starter. I mean, there, there are things you could be critical of it. Like if the power grid goes down in the world, how, how do Max, I get my I'm Bitcoins? just being devil's advocate. I, I, I understand. I'm answering a question. I, I'm, I, that's I'm a actually question. glad that Bitcoin's done so well. So many of my listeners have had like totally... Become, I'm, I'm not taking offense at your question. I'm happy no, no. to answer any Three questions. Three times. That's what I'm here for. No, no I agree. Three times. Three times. Questions. Three times, Max. I've had people buy me dinner uh, because they're listeners that got into Bitcoin because of the show and because of you. Three times people bought me dinner and were like trying to like buy me cowboy boots one time. Uh, because that happens it's, to me everywhere I go. People come up to me and said <laughs> the exact same story. Thank you, Max. I made an incredible amount of money with this. And um, it, 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 it's All right, viable. hey, we'll talk to you soon. Congratulations, your lordship. While President Obama...